Hi, and welcome to this installment of Bergeron Briefs. My name is Art Bergeron. Uh, if you haven't seen this show before, I'm an elder law attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell. There are 60 of us. We're in central Massachusetts. That's a lot of lawyers, but all I do is elder law. I've been coming to Nantucket now for quite a while and kind of very early on uh, met my friend Chuck Gifford. The purpose of this show is to give you a sense of the people that you need to know if you're a senior so that you know all your options, you know all of the institutions that could affect you, and you actually know the people that are involved in them. And what's so great about Martha's Vineyard, excuse me, what's so great about <laughs> Nantucket, sorry I, for mentioning the other, the other <laughs> island where my paralegal lives, the other island. So what's great about Nantucket is that everybody kind of does know everybody here, and so everybody knows Chuck Gifford. So Chuck, at, speaking of which, I know you would come on in, back in November or December. Right. And at that point, we were still talking about the great switch from the for-profit to non-profit and all that right. jazz. And as I mentioned to you since then, I've had my friend Ella Finn come on since mm -hmm. she switched into her new role as the executive director at the Landmark House. Right. And I've had my friend Rachel Cretion come on and talk about her sense of kind of how our island home is, what it could be. She even talked a little bit about it as it deals with you, you folks, and right. talks about talked about that campus. That possibility. So, right. so now you're back, mm -hmm. and as I said last time you were here, it was going to close any moment. And so, <laughs> can we talk about what happened? And yeah, so let's start. That just was, talk about what happened. That was a right? long any moment. That was a long. I might add. Yeah, um, yeah. That was November. We talked. So uh -huh. when did when did it, when did the the nonprofit actually buy? Basically, it closed the first of the year. Yes. Oh, that's I think, that's that, I think the, the official date is the seventh. So yep. you yep. know, the first week of, of 2015. Yeah. And at that point in time, the residences at Sherburn Commons, mm -hmm. our new name, came into being, and again, as a not-for-profit. But not to bore you or yep. the people who are watching, but quickly. Yeah. Quick background. When, how did it get to there? When right. when Sherburn Commons first opened, uh, again, the idea, the concept was it would it would open as a not-for-profit. The town owned the land. Owned and continues and to own. And continues to own yeah. the land. Yeah. And then leased the opportunity, a ground lease, to use that land. And the, the not-for-profit built the main building with 18 independent apartments, 14 assisted living department apartments, and at that point, eight dementia care apartments, plus 20 cottages. Um, it unfortunately didn't last because of lots of different things, of sort of a perfect storm of negative economic uh, factors all yeah, came into place. Yeah, didn't this kind of happen around the, you know, I want to say 2008. <laughs> a bad, yeah. a bad yeah. time to really, be doing Really, really a bad time. Yeah. yeah. And um, so as a result of that, they went bankrupt. Yeah. Now, they continued to operate in, during bankruptcy, but also during that time, they looked for another suitor. They found a for-profit entity who yeah. wanted to come in and, and run it. And so because of the change from not-for-profit to for-profit, had to go to town meeting to get blessed by the town. Yeah. The town did that in April of 2010, yeah. and directly afterwards, Sherburn Commons Residences LLC opened up as a for-profit. For but the ultimate owner of this was kind of far away. The, right? ultimate, honor, the ultimate owner was a real estate investment trust based in California. And the operator of it was also far away. The kind of overseer of you and of the staff was was well, in Florida. Was in Florida, right? The the, the management firm was yeah. in Florida. Did they ever come to visit? Uh, occasionally, yes. You yeah. really see them yeah. coming. Okay. That was in April 2010. Yeah. I joined the organization in December of 2010. Because um, you had come like from the hospital. From the uh, hospital. From the hospital. Yeah, I'd yeah. been at the hospital for six years. Yeah. Um, so from 2010 through the end of you know, 2014, we operated as a for-profit in name, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, we never, while we in, while we improved every year, didn't we didn't make never, a hell of a big profit. We never made any profit. Uh, we uh, never broke even. But that's not much. And a real estate investment trust, you know, yeah. their whole reason for being is to make money for their shareholders. So they right. were kind of losing interest in our our continuing because they were right. subsidizing us. They were keeping us afloat. Um, there was a for-profit that came in, another for-profit that came in and was interested, yeah. uh, that they negotiated back and forth with the town for almost two years. Uh, that unfortunately fell apart in January of 2014. But the man who had been sort of the main um, negotiator on behalf of the town had learned enough about the business, had learned enough about the books, had learned enough about the totality of running a place like that and said, you know, this is very important to our community. 
He started to talk to other people in the community and, and because this, garnered support. Excuse me, because this negotiator also, also lives in the community. Yes, right? he does. He, he he's lives. actually a member of the finance board. His yeah. name's David Worth. He's David not a, Worth. He's not yeah. a, uh, a phantom. Yeah. Um, so David started po talking to members of the community, and it, there was a, a groundswell, an interest in, in starting it again as a not-for-profit. So um, through 2014, negotiating back and forth with the Real Estate Investment Trust, and as I say, around the 7th of January of this year, we opened again now as the residences at Sherburne Commons, mm -hmm. Inc., and since then, but but that Inc. is a is a is nonprofit a corporation. Nonprofit corporation. We have a, a six-member board, yeah, uh, made up of Islanders and uh, a couple of of longtime summer people who have deep roots here. Yeah. So our our board is uh, Bruce Miller. So D so David Worth was David uh, had he been here in Nantucket for a while? Oh yeah, David. Uh, David's a native, I and mean, he was born here. His father ran the water company for many, many years. So he's he no washer shore. He no, he's, no, not he's, a wash ashore. he's totally in. Okay, right. so there's David. And but he, you know, he'd gone off and had a, a, a wonderful career yeah. prior to moving back to the island yeah. uh, to quote unquote retire. Probably moved to Martha's Vineyard <laughs> to make money, and then came then came back. No, no he went a little no. further than that. Okay. I think he was a. Maybe in the Elizabeth Island. That's really like, yeah, far. Really, really That's far really away. Far. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so there's him, and he's in, and he's obviously he's, and very he's the invested. president. Yeah, and he's the president yeah. of the of the board. And, and who, and who else is there? We have Bruce Miller, who used to be a selectman here, is no longer. Mm -hmm. um, we have Jeff Verney, who's a longtime summer person his whole life, uh, and now is here pretty close to half a year. I don't think quite half a year. Yeah. Uh, we have Jay Riggs, and she's a full-time resident. Yeah, and, um, and had she been a resident for, for quite a long for time. A long time. Long yeah. time. We have uh, Diane Tipton Bratt, who yeah. uh, is a, again a summer resident. We have Melissa Philbrick, who is well known to most of the people on the island. Works for Remain Nantucket. Yeah, and um, she's been here for a long time. Uh, I think that's our six, and then David. I think that's so. That's real local. Really local. You're talking it's all local. Yeah. And um, now, are you a member of the board by virtue of your being of the, your role there? I am not a member of the board. What? I report to the board. You report to the board. So I am I am a member of the board meetings. I go to the board meetings, I but see. when they go to executive session, I I, I and, step out. And what's your official title now? Right? I am the executive director. You're the executive director. Still the executive director. So one of the things we were talking about before uh, the show, and I wanted you to kind of talk about, was so if I'm an average person and I've been hearing about this from a distance for a long time. Can you just talk about kind of what it was versus what it is? What in terms of the comp in terms of like who is there or, or in, you said there was a memory care unit for a while and maybe mm -hmm. that wasn't in terms of those houses. So if I drive when I drive in cuz I drive in a lot, mm -hmm. right? Right. Uh, keep keep wishing you had better internet access. But that's a different <laughs> it's a different it's a different question. It's a different question. We might be able to fix that. But now, you know, I this said, is an yeah. you know, I, I, uh -huh. I get it. You uh -huh. know, so you don't want internet you access. You have Verizon or AT&T. No, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, so, so I drive in and there are these houses that mm -hmm. are on the left. Right. And then there's this big building on the right. The that's all I know until right. it, right? So 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 who is there now? Who is in the houses? Who is in the main building versus what you would what it would had originally been and kind of how do you imagine it? changing into the future. Right, very good. Um, well, as you look at the cottages, when I started there were f five, basically five cottages yeah. that were occupied. Um, today, right now, today, we have uh, 13 that are who are occupied full-time. We have another uh, three that are occupied uh, for summer rentals. Um, and then we have two more that are committed to, you know, people have deposits down are committed to moving into them on a full-time basis. So we've really got a couple, three, I think, empty cottages I was just right going to say, pretty yeah. much it's all full then. Yeah. It's all full. And when you say summer rentals, those are folks literally who, can, who are coming for the whole summer and they're renting during the summer? Yeah, I have, people who are coming I have for two, a week? I have two couples who come for the whole summer, yeah. come in in June and stay into September. I, I have one uh, couple who are here for the month of July. The building that they were in, there'd been another uh, couple who had been in there for like two weeks at the very end of June. Yeah. Uh, by the way, that one's available in August if you know yeah. anybody who'd like yes. to talk to me about that. Um, so that's what's happening in the cottages. In the, in the main building... Oh, I want to just go back to the cottages yeah. for a second. It seemed to me that in the first show you had told me that some of those were for, had been sold, that there were actually owners well, of some of those. I houses. was going to go back to that. The... the, the 
the cottages, the, the, the business model at the moment is full rental. I see. Uh, for a year at a time. I see. And with an ongoing, you know, with an ongoing contract. Yeah. Yeah. But we have permission and are putting together and finalizing, actually, the ability to condo the cottages. So we will be in a position to sell those cottages. I see. Uh, as a condo. I see. And again, the, the, the same parameters still hold, hold true. In other words, you still have to be 55 years of age. Really, that's the only thing. You have to be 55 years of age. But yeah. you, can, you can buy a condo uh, and live in it. You can buy a condo as an investment and you could rent it, again, to somebody else who was 55. Um, I see. You could come see. buy a condo, come and spend the summer, go to Florida for the winter, come and spend the summer and go, or go, come and spend the winter and move back to Eel Point or someplace in the winter if you right, want to. Right, because you don't like the traffic right. in the summer. Exactly. So you're here for the really good months. Or, or, you, October, don't, or you don't, or you don't want to be way out at the West End when you know the storms start hitting in the winter, and you want to be able to be in a place where there's power and you know right. all that kind of stuff. I see. So, so that's available. There's no, no, no one right now owns a cot, a cot. No, but if somebody's interested, I would absolutely take a phone call and we could talk about how to how to put that all together. We're we are in that finalizing that process right now. And do you is is it anticipated that there will be some limit on the number of ones that you will sell, or or in your business plan, do you literally consider the possibility of selling all of those twenty? Um, at the at the moment, I think we would consider selling any number of them. I'm I not see. sure the goal is to sell all 20 of them, I but it, you know, if the if the if the demand was there, we certainly would you would would look at that. And sure. you're not restricted in, in as far as the town of Nantucket is concerned. You're not restricted no. in terms of how many you can sell. No. So that's that's a good sense. You have right. a good sense of that. So, so tell us about the big the big building. Then. Well, the main building in the condo I world. I should call it the big building. The, the main building. The main. The, main building. the big house. The big. <laughs> the uh, very the, impressive yeah, house. Yeah, the very impressive. Yeah. Um, that actually will be one condo. The whole building will be a condo owned by a big family. Yes, owned by the not for profit, right? I see. So we have 18 independent cottage, in, independent apartments. Now these are generally one to two bedroom apartments, full kitchen, and in some cases, like I say, one to two bedrooms. In some cases, two bathroom type uh, apartments. Yeah. Now I've seen some of these, and these are pretty large too, right? Some of them are quite large. Yeah. Can you, can you give yeah. us a, just an order of magnitude of how big those places uh, are? I don't have all the square uh, footage uh, in my a, head, but yeah. I mean, basically, the smallest is a, a master bedroom, a large single room, yeah. a separate kitchen, separate bath, a lot of closet space. Um, and the largest is, you know, two full bedrooms of a uh, living room, dining room space, again, separate kitchen, two full baths. Actually, those even come with a tub in one of the baths. Yeah. And you're, and you're saying all of those, and how many of those? Well, are there, are, there are 18, and right now I have 16 of them occupied. So, uh, and I have somebody very interested in one of the other ones. And are so, all of those being rented on a, on a kind of a year to mm -hmm. year to year basis? Yeah, those are all what we I would see. call year round rentals. I see. And to qualify for those, you need to be 55. over 55. That's it. Do you need to have be at a certain level of independence in terms of your health in order to, to live there? Well, those are those are considered independent living. So yeah, I mean, so there's an apartment. Yeah, there's an apartment. I see. Then we have 14 assisted living apartments. Excuse me, I okay. just want to step yeah. back. So yeah. for those 18, you're writing a rent check, and in return for that, you're getting oh, what? well, you're getting full utilities. Yeah, all your utilities. You're getting uh, housekeeping once a week. Yeah. You're getting maintenance. You're getting landscaping if you're in a cottage, because it's the same deal there. Uh, yeah. Landscaping, though the main building is also being landscaped. Uh, you're getting trash removal. You're getting a phone. You're getting Wi-Fi access. You're getting basic cable, and I see. you're getting a meal a day. Ah, and so it's there's your all, choice. So there's also a meal. There's also a meal, and we are. The kitchen's producing three meals a day, so you have a choice of which one it is. Most people in independent pick dinner, but. You could have breakfast if you wanted to. I mean, I see. it's it's available. I see. And you know, so everybody gets, anybody in independent gets a meal a day. So however many days there are in the month, they get that meal. Yeah. Yeah. And you can, if you're, especially in the summer when a lot of people go out, or some people go to Sankety for you know steak night or the yacht club or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, those meals that you don't eat, you can use to have guests come and join you. Oh, I so see. So you can you can accumulate mm -hmm. credits, yeah, yeah like exactly. meal credits. Exactly. Oh, that's a great idea. That is that new or is that no? It's that, always been that way. Yes, it's always been that way. Um, 
So yeah, and so that so that describes. And if you go beyond yeah. your thirty days, yeah. say you have a couple of people over and you don't go out to eat as often as you 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 may have, um, then you can have um, you can still get the meals. It just a, there's a flat a la carte fee for it. That's that there's a know. charge for it. Yeah. Now now are those eighteen apartments in a particular wing, or is it are these scattered around? No, it's so they're they're in what would be considered the the west. Wing. wing. So if I'm walking into the main entrance, is that that's, the left. that's to the left. Right. And is that set, that 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 building is what two two, two floors? floors? Two right. floors. So it's kind of first over and second there. floor. Right. I get it. So now tell me about the rest of the building. Well, the rest of the building. Uh, this is, is fun. It's like a little virtual <laughs> tour. Next <laughs> next time we'll have you come in with some some pictures. With pictures, we'll we yes. can do that. Right. Is that, and in this one. And in this one. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, if you come in, you go to the right. Uh, that and and you go upstairs. That's the assisted living wing, and we mm -hmm. have fourteen apartments there. We mm -hmm. have ten one-bedroom apartments and four two-bedroom apartments. Um, they are what we call a studio apartment. In other words, the kitchen isn't so much a kitchen as it is, uh, use a nautical term, more like a galley in a way. It's like mm -hmm. a two-burner stove, no oven, small microwave, small fridge. I see. But people who are in assisted living, in addition to everything I just described to you, get three meals a day. I see. And so an hour service, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But so it's expected, as far as the meals are concerned, that you're going to be kind of eating. If you're you're there, it's kind of snacks and stuff. If right. you're using the kitchen, right. it's in the that's in the room. Right. Exactly. I see. You know, you know, a cup of tea or a whatever toast or something, in you know, in the middle of the after whatever. I mean, right. that's that's there. Um, and and so so that's th it's three meals a day. And by the way, is that can you eat any time, or is those kind of are those scheduled? Well, they're so. they're they're windows of time. In yeah. you know, for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner, there's about an hour and a half to two hour time period, which you then you can go down and and, and order lunch, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And in, there are menus in every case, so it's not like it's a set meal that you have to have. You have choices right. to make. Um, and dinner, in particular, we change that menu up and the offerings there on a on a about two week basis. Plus, every night we have specials. And of the specials, one of the specials is always a fish. I don't know, we live on an island, so right. fish seem to be a popular right. item. But there'll be a special soup, there'll be a special you know, fish, and then there'll be a special entree. I see. Um, I see. So, for the, so for the assisted living, it's studios, but you're getting three meals a day, right. and you're also getting an hour of service. Right. What's the service? The service is assistance with daily living. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, why am I explaining this to you, Art? Because you know because this better gonna, than I do. <laughs> it always well, it always amazes the average person though when I'll use that term, activities of daily living, and they'll say, "But isn't that just mean activities, the things you do in a day?" And I say, no. "No, actually, there's kind of a magic definition." There are magic definitions, right. and, it, and it, it they are things that help. As we get older, certain things get more difficult to do, and this allows, by give, providing that assistance, it allows people to stay as independent as they can be for as long yeah. as they can be. And so, so when you're saying activities of daily living, what do you mean? We're talking about things like showering, yeah. dressing, transferring, taking transferring, medication, getting, getting, out getting out of the chair, walking get, across a room, sitting down right, again exactly. without falling down. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's uh, taking medication, your medication at the right time in the right order. It's uh, help getting to places, transporting uh, for you know if you have to get from your room down to the down to the dining transporting room. Transporting within the building. Within the building, yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, and those are the types of things that help with again assistance with daily living. Now the difference is, as you know, but within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, assisted living is defined as a social residential model as opposed to a medical model. If you get to a point where you require more medical assistance, you, you perhaps need shots instead of pills, you can't physically take those pills by yourself anymore. It takes more than one person to help you transfer. If you have a, a wound that needs to be dressed and if taken If you need care like of, a nurse. If, if you, you really need a nurse, need, yeah. you need medical assistance, yeah. then you move out of assisted living and into skilled nursing, which on Nantucket is the island home. I see. Um, I see. So assisted living is can, it, are, are assistance with those activities of daily living, which are kind of n the non-medical ones, but include, here's the pills you need to take, right. but don't include giving you the pills or right. administering the shot. Right. All of those things can be provided. So suppose I am, uh, and I don't think this is an uncommon 
this is, you know, I, because all of my clients are, I'm, I'm a young person to my clients, right? <laughs> I think my average, I think I actually checked it this year, my median client age is now 77. Oh, so a lot of my clients, yeah, mm -hmm. they still think I'm pretty young. I love this. I love that. That's part, a nice right? part. I've yeah. still got a few more years to go. <laughs> so, so for many of these people, they may need more than one hour of help yeah. in a day. Yeah. Although many, for many of them, that is enough. And, and so, what, what are the, one of the things that's nice about assisted living versus at home, right? Is that you don't have to try to hire somebody to drive to your house to do, you know, item A. And then they got to go home, of course. And right. then, like in the afternoon, to drive to your house and do item B. And so, of course, you're paying a lot of money because the hour of assistance that you need takes four hours for someone to give you because right. of all of the, the time. travel time, etc. Right. right. Whereas, if you're in in a in a in an assisted living community, the, uh, people are right there. Right. And, so and we break it down. We break it down basically into 15 minute intervals. Into, so, right. You know, if you all you need is help taking your pills, or if you're for whatever reason you need someone help bring you your mm -hmm. bring you your meal, mm -hmm. then you know those are that's like 15 minutes at a pop. So you're you've still got another half an hour to use for whatever later right. on. Right. So thinking about it that way, a person who actually might need assistance with more than one of the activities of daily living could actually get covered mm -hmm. by that hour. Oh yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So, and if you need more. We can give you more, we, I, and you just and you just add it on. It's right. like a la carte. Right, exactly. And final final question you, as one of the first questions I asked when you come in. So how's it going? Well, you, you know, know is it, is this you know, it's nice you asked me because six months into it, in our new residence at Sherburn Commons, right. we are at a break even, We're which is pretty amazing. Pretty amazing considering where we've been. Uh, if you look at where we were a year ago and where we are today, it's quite a change. And it can't be attributed to the, to the charisma of the executive director because it's the same executive director. Right? Yeah, and if anything, he's gotten a hell of a lot less he's, charismatic. Well, less hair. Less, I noticed the yeah. worry, right? But it must be David Worth. So it, it must be David Worth. <laughs> it must be David Worth. So listen, thank you very, very much for My coming pleasure. on. I think it's really important that people realize, I, mean, I hate to use the line, it's under new management, that something fundamental has changed. And the fundamental thing, and to me it's the most important, is that it's now locally owned, right. non-profit and locally owned, which right. means it's something that is great for this island. I'm even suggesting this to friends of mine in the other island. That they come over here? <laughs> no, no, no that's, where you're, that's, where you're, that's where your branch is going to be on the, oh, on the, other, on island. the other island. So thank you very, very much for uh, tuning in. Uh, thank you very much to Chuck Gifford for coming over. My pleasure. And I look forward to seeing you in my next installment of Bergeron Briefs. Thank you.